For the first time in years, SpaceX has taken us inside the development of their Starship Lunar Lander, the vehicle that will finally return American boots to the surface of the moon in this decade. Or will it? The path to a successful crewed landing on the moon has been long and people are starting to get impatient. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because this new sense of urgency has lit a fire under SpaceX, and they are about to change everything you think you know about the Artemis moon landing. It all begins with politics. On October 20th, the acting NASA administrator Sean Duffy decides that he's going to publicly call out SpaceX and threaten to cancel their moon landing contract on a CNBC television show called Squawk Box. He tells the host, I love SpaceX. It's an amazing company. The problem is they are behind. They've pushed their timelines out and we are in a race against China. This is mostly true and there is a very real possibility that Chinese astronauts are going to land on the moon before NASA. But it's also not entirely a SpaceX problem because the whole Artemis program is actually behind schedule. The first uncrewed test flight of NASA's SLS moon rocket and Orion capsule lifted off November 2022. And this came after 11 years of development at Boeing and Lockheed Martin. The SLS and Orion were then supposed to launch for a second time in 2024. This flight would take a crew of three on a trip around the moon and then back again. That hasn't happened yet and is tentatively scheduled to launch in the first half of 2026, but there's no indication of how feasible that timeline actually is. Meanwhile, over at SpaceX, They've been developing their Starship for about five years now, and in that time, have launched a combined total of 22 test flights, many of which have included the successful liftoff and even landing of the most powerful rocket ever made. So Duffy is throwing stones in a glass house already, but he continued to raise the stakes telling CNBC, the president and I want to get to the moon in this president's term, so I'm gonna open up the contract. I'm going to let other space companies compete with SpaceX like Blue Origin. What he's talking about here is the contract that NASA awarded to SpaceX in 2021, which the Jeff Bezos owned Blue Origin also competed for and lost with their Blue Moon proposal. SpaceX was promised $2.9 billion to develop a Starship variant called HLS. That's the human landing system and this would be used to transport American astronauts to the surface of the moon on the Artemis 3 mission, which at the time was aiming to launch in 2024, then was pushed back to 2026, and right now they are still hoping for some time in the middle of 2027. But as the acting administrator, what Duffy is alluding to here is that this is not feeling very realistic either. Anyway, in a move that would surprise no one, Elon Musk didn't take kindly to those remarks and immediately jumped on his social media platform X to start throwing insults at Sean Duffy, calling him a dangerously stupid, unqualified dummy who is trying to kill NASA. For those of us unfamiliar with Mr. Duffy, he's a former competitive lumberjack who appeared on MTV's The Real World television show in 1997, then he became a lawyer, then started his career as a Republican politician in the state of Wisconsin, then after a decade of that, he resigned from the government and started hosting another TV show, this time on Fox News, until he was chosen by President Trump to become the US Secretary of Transportation. Then in July 2025, he started serving double duty and added acting NASA administrator to his resume. So Elon might have a point there, not that it really matters either way because in the wake of this chaos, President Trump has just brought in a new candidate to take over as the head of NASA. It's actually the same candidate that he had before. Back in January 2025, billionaire jet fighter pilot, astronaut, and spacewalker Jared Isaacman, who also happens to be a guy that Elon Musk really likes, but Donald Trump expressed some pretty serious doubts about back in the spring. Coincidentally, right around the time that he was in the middle of a very public feud with Elon Musk. Now, as fascinating as it is to see Jared back in the political game, the most important thing to come out of this whole ordeal has been a comprehensive new update from SpaceX on the progress of their lunar starship. Think of it like showing their receipts, proof that the company is living up to Elon Musk's recent claim that SpaceX is moving like lightning compared to the rest of the space industry. But this update is also hinting at an even bolder claim made by Musk in retaliation to Mr. Duffy writing, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. 
mark my words. So the first thing that SpaceX really wants you to know is that there are actually two paths that Starship development is going down right now. One has been very public, but the other has been unfolding in secret until now. Path one is the core Starship system. That's what we've been watching launch and land and explode for the past two years. None of this is being done so that SpaceX can go land on the moon. The core Starship mission is about going to Mars. That's the driving force behind everything we've seen so far. So when we hear that NASA is giving SpaceX $3 billion, this is not what the money is being used for. That is all self-funded by SpaceX. Now, there are a lot of new technologies that are being developed for the core Starship system that will be transferable to other non-Mars applications. This is called Path 2, the lander, also known as the HLS or Lunar Starship. SpaceX has been working on this project since 2022, and in that time, they've completed 49 project milestones related to developing the subsystems, infrastructure, and operations needed to land astronauts on the moon. This is where the NASA funding has gone, and they only receive small portions of these $3 billion when they complete each milestone. SpaceX also says that the vast majority of these have been achieved on time or ahead of schedule. So here is what they've been up to. SpaceX has built a full-scale model for the interior of the Lunar Starship cabin. That's the space where astronauts will live on the moon. And they've been using that model to test life support, temperature, and humidity control systems with multiple people inside the cabin. Now, we're not exactly sure where that test model is located. We know that SpaceX has an old mock-up of a Lunar Starship nose cone stashed in a parking lot at Starbase, but that's probably not what they're talking about here, and that's not the only big thing they've been hiding from us. Because SpaceX has also been using another full-scale model of the entire HLS to do drop testing. This is done specifically to test the landing legs on simulated moon soil and study how the feet of the legs interact with the ground. So somewhere out there is a full-sized starship with landing legs, and they've been picking up and dropping on a fake moon. That's what we haven't seen. But one thing we have seen before is this test rig for the airlock and elevator. This was done in partnership with Axiom, who are making the lunar spacesuits, and that's allowed the potential crew members to practice using the elevator and moving from the airlock to the surface of the moon in a fully pressurized suit identical to what they'll use on the real mission. Then there's the Starship Fuel Depot. This is another variant of the main vehicle that's being developed alongside the HLS. The fuel depot is also a big part of the Mars mission, but it includes a lot of the same design elements as HLS. For example, they are both painted white. That's done to reflect as much sunlight as possible and help to keep what's inside the ship nice and cool. Only the depot will have rocket fuel inside, not people. But in many ways, that's even more difficult because liquid oxygen and liquid methane need to be held at temperatures below negative 100 degrees Celsius or else they start to boil away. So the depot ship ends up using a lot of the same power generation and temperature control systems that will serve astronauts on the moon. SpaceX has been running small-scale propellant transfer tests, but a full-scale transfer of cryogenic fuel from one spaceship to another has never actually been attempted before by anyone. Another important test that SpaceX is working on is with Starship's docking adapter. This is how the lander and the Orion capsule will meet up in lunar orbit and allow people to move between the two vehicles. They've also done a lunar landing throttle test with Starship's Raptor rocket engines, basically running the engine through a moon landing scenario and controlling the thrust to simulate a soft touchdown. Alongside that, there have also been Raptor cold start tests where they use the ultra cold cryogenic rocket fuel to essentially deep freeze the engine and simulate the conditions after spending a long duration just frozen in space. And then they make sure that the engine can still fire back up and run as expected. Then there's micrometeoroid and orbital debris impact testing. SpaceX is taking the materials that they're going to use for the HLS exterior, like the body panels and the windows, and they shoot at it to see how well it's going to hold up against impacts in space or on the moon. They also do this under harsh thermal conditions to simulate the extreme heat and cold that the ship is going to encounter along the way, just to make sure that the material is strong enough at any temperature. Another important part of this system is going to be the software that will autonomously locate a safe landing site on the moon and guide the Starship down to the surface. 
That includes testing the actual flight computers that the landing software will run on, along with all of the cameras, sensors, and radar that's going to help the computer guide itself in. At the same time, they need a robust communication system that uses radio frequencies to communicate with the Earth while in flight. Then there's the medical system. There won't be a doctor on board the Lunar Starship, so if any medical emergency comes up, then that's also going to need a very robust communication system with doctors back on Earth. All of that combined equals a lot of work that's been going on mostly behind the scenes over at SpaceX. But what comes next? Well, that's where things get weird. In their update, SpaceX writes, Starship continues to simultaneously be the fastest path to returning humans to the surface of the moon and a core enabler of the Artemis program's goal to establish a permanent, sustainable presence on the lunar surface. Since the contract was awarded, we have been consistently responsive to NASA as requirements for Artemis 3 have changed and have shared ideas on how to simplify the mission to align with national priorities. In response to the latest calls we've shared and are formally assessing a simplified mission architecture and concept of operations that we believe will result in a faster return to the moon while simultaneously improving crew safety. As for what they mean by a simplified mission architecture, that's hard to say exactly because looking at the Starship system as a whole, it does not lend itself to simplicity. It's built from the ground up to be insane. So I think back to Elon's post on X, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. What he really has in mind is simplifying the SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft out of existence. That means launching the crew on Starship, landing on the moon, and bringing them back all in one vehicle. Now, there's one thing that the lunar Starship can't do, which is land on Earth. That's because it doesn't have a heat shield or wings, and trying to add those now would basically nullify a lot of the work that's already been done. But it could always use that docking port to link up with a Dragon capsule in orbit, and we know that those can safely bring people down from space. They could also launch a Dragon to start the mission and just link up with a Starship in Earth orbit too. When you think about it, SpaceX already has most of the things that would be required to do a moon landing all on their own basically turning a project with three major contractors into just one. And that would definitely be a simplified mission architecture. Now, either way, I wouldn't have expected that to be a plan that NASA would ever go for until Trump brought Jared Isaacman back into the picture. With him in charge, SpaceX is going to have a lot more room to do things the way they want to do them. And as for Trump, all he cares about is a moon landing before his term as president is over. I don't think he's picky, even if Elon did call him a pedophile. It's not like Elon's never done that before. It's one of his go-tos. So 2026 is going to be a big year. We hopefully see people fly pretty close to the moon on Artemis 2, and we are probably going to get a real answer on how they will eventually land on the moon with Artemis 3. Unfortunately, though, there will probably still be a lot of politics along the way.